today's overpopulated and modern world of surf exploration, it has become more and more challenging to find that truly unique surf adventure. In the northeast corner of Brazil, where the Amazon River empties into the Atlantic Ocean, there exists a natural phenomenon called the Pororoca. The Pororoca is one of the world's only surfable tidal waves. The wave comes each year during the lunar equinox, when the full moon crosses the equator and creates the Earth's most extreme tides. During this time, the Amazon's tide shift is so great that the incoming water surges from the ocean, up the river, and creates a destructive wall of water that travels upstream for almost 50 kilometers. As the tidal surge pushes up the river, it mysteriously transforms into a miraculous surfing wave that breaks continuously for almost two hours. Because of its rare occurrence and remote location, the Pororoca has been witnessed by few and surfed by even fewer. We set out with Japanese surf star Mar Ono and an international team of surfers on an expedition to find the Pororoca and ride the longest wave of their lives. For Mar and our team of surfers, it was a once in a lifetime journey and a chance to have one of the most unique surf experiences in one of the most exotic locations in the world. Upon our arrival in the town of Macapá, our crew hooked up with Brazilian surfer and Poro Roca specialist, Sergio Laos. Sergio has surfed this mysterious wave more than anyone. At one point, he held the world record for the longest wave ridden, when he surfed a single wave for 35 minutes and traveled over 10 kilometers. The city of Macapá sits on the banks of the Amazon and almost directly on the equator. It was to be our point of departure and our last brush with civilization. The Pororoca occurs for only a few days around the full moon. With the right knowledge, the coming of the wave can be predicted like clockwork. We knew the wave wouldn't wait for us and hoped an early morning departure would keep us on schedule. To experience the Pororoca, you have to be committed to making the long journey to get there. The first stage of our trip took us across the northern state of Amapá. The drive was over mostly unpaved roads that connected small, isolated villages in the middle of the jungle. Pororoca was now only a day away. What lay ahead was still a mystery. We got back on the road to try and make the river by sundown and ensure we had enough time on the river to make it to the wave. After hundreds of kilometers of intense driving, we arrived in the small harbor town of Cutillas, which for us was the end of the road. We would soon set sail down the Aragari River, on which we would travel for the next day. A sense of excitement filled the crew as we knew we were one step closer to our final destination. We were now officially on Amazon time and had nothing to do but sit back, take in the beauty of the river, and think about our next two days of surfing. After the entire night on the river, we arrived at a point where our boat could go no further. We awoke before dawn with just enough time to shake off sleep and prepare our equipment for the next stage. The Pororoca begins to break at the exact moment of the tide swing and then rushes up the river at 30 kilometers an hour. By Sergio's calculations, the Pororoca would arrive within the hour. Yeah, boys! We left our riverboat behind in a safe harbor where it could not be destroyed by the wave. For the next 40 minutes, we would race to meet the wave in small speedboats. Within moments of our departure, the heavens opened up and hit us with a relentless and unforgiving thunderstorm. The Amazon seemed determined to make our first session with the poor Roca as challenging as possible. We heard the rumble before we could see it. As the wave grew on the horizon, so did the realization that we were moments away from what we had traveled halfway around the world for. Mar was the first one in the water and after just a few turns, looked completely at home on this never-ending wave. The unexpected power and speed of the wave, combined with the harsh weather conditions, created a level of intensity that took everyone by surprise. At one point, we watched in awe as a perfect barrel opened up and peeled non-stop off the far bank for almost three minutes. This empty, dark tube was a testimony to the untapped potential and unpredictability of this wave. At a bend in the river, the full force of the wave became evident as we watched it slam head-on into the riverbank. 
The wave would change size and shape at a moment's notice. In certain sections, the wave walled up to what some of the local crew called the biggest waves ever ridden here. After Sergio had what would have been considered a routine wipeout, we noticed that his board was still on the wave without him. To be on the Amazon without a board in the swift moving current was a serious situation. The possibility that he could be pulled under or swept out to sea was very real. Yeah, yeah. Sergio is down. Sergio is down. After a preliminary jet ski search came up empty, our surf session quickly turned into a search and rescue mission. All right, Kevin, do you copy? Kevin, do you copy? This is bad. When things were starting to look grim, our camera spotted a tiny speck in the middle of the river. Did I have a visual? We had found him. Sergio had been struggling alone in the river for over 20 minutes. And by the time we pulled him in, he looked to be almost out of energy. Our first experience with the Poro Roca had been an intense one. We now had a much welcome day to recover and get re-energized. It also gave us the opportunity to check out the largely unexplored jungle that surrounded us along the river. The next morning, we arrived at the river mouth with time to spare. After witnessing the power of the poor Oroka the day before, a moment to regroup on the riverbank and plan out the day's attack was a welcome change. The sun came out and the wind died down. The change in the weather had the crew in good spirits. Today would be our last day to surf, and everyone was looking forward to having another crack at the wave. The wave came again, right on schedule. The first wave was already longer than anything ridden the day before, and it was still going. Oh! By the time all three surfers kicked out from exhaustion, they had ridden this wave for over 25 minutes. At one point where the river changed direction and the wave turned slightly into the wind, the conditions magically transformed into the glassiest any of us had ever seen. The swell was so strong that it pushed farther down the river than it had the day before. The ongoing pulse opened up an opportunity for a final, almost surreal session that peeled endlessly along the shallow riverbank. For Mar, it was an unforgettable last wave on what had turned out to be a trip of a lifetime. Riding an endless wave like the poor Oroka is what surfers dream about. For our crew, it had become a reality. After an exhausting and unforgettable final session, the wave slowly died and faded away down the river. Mar, John, and Sergio gathered to give thanks to the poor Oroka by drinking three times from the river. Yes, one, two, three. Mission is completed, I think.